Page, please. Kingdom solutions to financial problems. Say that with me. Kingdom solutions to financial problems. I want to focus on specifically one of the most important keys in the kingdom for living financially free. I'm going to give you a secret. One of the secrets Jesus talked about when he talked about, I will give you the keys of the kingdom. One of the most important kingdom keys is the principle of management. Write that down. We're going to talk about what? The principle of management. Management is probably the most absent component in churches. The average pastor in this city graduated from a seminary or a Bible school and there was no class on management. And they told him or her, you are ready to start the ministry. That is why most churches are suffering, broke, or attracting broke people. And that is why most of the people in the churches in the city are financially embarrassed. They quote scripture, but don't experience those scriptures. Genesis chapter 2, verse 4. It says, when the Lord God had made the earth and the heavens, and no shrub of the field had yet appeared on the earth, and no plant of the field had yet sprung up. Why? For means because the Lord had not yet sent rain on the earth. Why? Because there was no man to work the ground. Now, let's not rush through this verse. This is a powerful verse about you and about the earth. First of all, we got a record of God creating the heavens and the earth. And then it says, there was no life on the earth. Can you go back and imagine a massive planet spinning in space with just rock, hard, slush, no trees, no animals, no grass, no beauty, no plants. He didn't allow anything to grow. He didn't allow anything to grow. He didn't allow anything to grow. Notice it says, because God had not sent what? rain. In other words, God refused to let anything grow and it was his fault. What you see here is God's motivation for the creation of man. I just gave you something you should write down. I'm going to say it again. God himself says he didn't allow anything to grow, anything to develop. He didn't allow anything to progress because he was lacking something. What was he lacking? He said it. He says, I was lacking man, a species that would work the ground. I thought I would help you and do your research for you. And I discovered that the word work that God used here is the word ergon. It means management. Shocked? Yes, you are. God says, I refuse to let anything grow because I don't have a manager. Management is defined as, write it down, management is the effective, efficient, correct, and timely use of another person's property and resources for the purpose for which they were delegated with a view to producing the expected added value back to the person. Please buy this CD so you can rewind it 10 times. Management is what? It is the effective, efficient, correct, and timely use of another person's property and resources for the purpose for which they delegated it with a view to producing the expected added value. That's management. Management automatically implies you don't own the material. Management also implies that when you bring it back, it's supposed to be better. Yeah. It's yeah. supposed to have more value. That's management. God says, I won't allow anything to grow because I don't have anyone.
to add value to what I'm about to create. And I want it to be used effectively, efficiently, and timely for the purpose for which I gave it to them. That's why God is upset at lazy people. You know, I tell you what, you're all taking too long to write. So <laughs> let me just take this. I got so much to give you tonight. I want you to get it right now. Okay, everybody say management and prayer. Management. Take a deep breath. Tell your neighbor something's coming. <laughs> so sit up straight. All right, watch this. This principle, therefore, teaches some important things. Number one, God will never give you what you pray for. Only what you can manage. Here you are praying for a thousand bucks. And God says, wait a minute. I gave you a hundred yesterday. You can't even pay ten dollars tithes. You're praying for a big house. And the house you're renting, you keep it dirty. Oh, say it again. Yes. You can't manage another person's property. How dare I give you property of your own, he says. Don't get quiet now. You pray for a bigger church and God says, you know something? You can't manage the church you're renting. You pray for souls. Oh God, give me souls. And the people you got now, you can't manage. So God protects them from you. If you get the million dollars you're praying for, it will kill you. You cannot manage $500. You spend 200 bucks on a dress, $150 on your, your hair, and put 20 bucks in the offering and ask God for a million dollars? Is God stupid or what? You all don't want me to teach on money and management. God wants you to be an economist. What's an economist? To economize means to get the maximum out of the minimum. The average person in this building is not an economist because they don't know the value of what they have already. You know, I was telling the folks in Baltimore yesterday or the day before, I told them, look, you have the audacity to tell God that you are broke and unemployed. And in your house is an oven that you only use twice a week. That's abuse. That's bad management. You got an oven sitting there idle for six days of the week. You only use it on Sunday. You could at least get some flour and water with some raisins, bake some cookies every day, put them in a plastic bag, and make yourself a factory out of your own kitchen. That's management. No, you lazy thing. You're looking for a job. That's your problem. Uh-oh, take a deep breath, please. It's bad management. Write this down. To economize means to get the most out of the least. You got clothing in your closet you don't wear. And they've been there for 10 years, and you put on too much weight, they'll never fit you again. And you tell me you ain't got no money? Take a deep breath. All right, it gets easier. To economize means to add value to your gift. I put it this way, uh, answered prayer is regulated by your capacity to manage. God will never give you what you pray for. He regulates his answer by what you can manage. So he watches your management to see if you can handle what you're asking for. Never pray beyond your management. Money. Money is easy to get. Money is supposed to come to you. So if it keeps moving away from you, it is telling you something you can't manage. Hi, thank you so much for watching. Please remember you can support our work on our Patreon page and you get access to exclusive content and full videos. And please hit that subscribe button if you haven't done so and click the notification bell to be the first to receive newer content. Please don't forget to like and share this video with your friends. Favor is God's presence on your life. Favor is what opens up doors that no man can shut. Favor is what puts you in positions that, that nobody really thinks you're qualified for. Favor is what enables you to do things that you know are beyond your capacity, but God has positioned you and placed you and prepared a way for you. That's favor on your life. And if you have the Holy Spirit of God, you have faith.